All right, so today we are in Acts chapter 2, Pentecost. Now, Ascension and Pentecost are not this close together, but in our book they are. So, um, Pentecost is also known as Feast of Weeks or Feast of Harvest. Um, it's one of three festivals that God established early on in Israel. Um, celebrated 50 days after Passover, Pentecost comes from the Greek word meaning 50. Penta, just in case you were wondering. And many people travel to Jerusalem um, at this time to stay and enjoy the festivities. And the disciples were also together on the day of Pentecost, and they were waiting in Jerusalem to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So here they are still waiting. All right. Um, they were waiting with great devotion and prayer, and they were always together waiting for this to happen. In, Act two, in Acts 2, um, it shows a dramatic way of transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Um, the disciples were filled with joy at this time. Um, Peter, who was the one who denied Christ, um, gave an amazing testimony of Jesus. People were so compelled by his story, they couldn't help but ask what they were supposed to do. So Peter proclaimed that all important significance of the Great Commission when he answered their question by saying, Repent and be baptized. So this baptism was for everyone. It didn't matter how old they were. didn't matter if they were a boy or a girl. It didn't matter what their job was. And that day, there were about 3,000 people that were baptized. And that's the day that the church was born. So Pentecost is really like a birthday. Um, it's the day that the church was, I guess, I don't really like saying born because it wasn't really born, but... I guess in a way it was. So our story today is on Pentecost, but before we actually get to our page five and six in our book, let's hear our devotion. Grandma, this spaghetti is great, Benjamin said with a mouthful. Thanks, Grandma beamed. I made the sauce with the tomatoes and onions that I can each year. Want to see how big my tomato seedlings are getting? I'm almost ready to transplant them into the garden. Grandma led Benjamin over to her little greenhouse area. Whoa, these are huge, Grandma. I remember when we planted the seeds. It doesn't seem like that long ago. Oh, it's probably been about two months. The tomato plants just love the full light and they need plenty of water to grow. How's your plant doing, Benjamin? Hmm. Benjamin looked down at his toes. He was really hoping Grandma wouldn't ask him about his. He had had so much fun planting the seeds with Grandma, but after a while, he forgot to water his plant. Uh, well, it, uh, it started off good, Grandma, but then I kind of forgot to water it, and it shriveled up and died. Oh dear, most plants need lots of water to grow big and strong. Well, maybe after I get these seedlings into my garden, I'll let you use the hose and help me water them. It'll be a fun way to help you remember. Thanks, Grandma. I'll do whatever it takes so you can make more of this delicious spaghetti. God showed his love for us when he gave us the Holy Spirit that plants faith in our hearts. Just like water is poured on a plant and helps it grow, God pours the Holy Spirit into our hearts and helps our faith to grow. Not only does he do that with you, but also with thousands and even millions of others. Imagine an entire garden filled with tomato plants. That's how it is with God's family. So if you look at page five in your book, you see uh, four men and they have flames above their head, right? All right. So we're gonna talk about why those flames are up there. 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, he was with his disciples. Near, near, a hill, near a hilltop in Jerusalem. He told his disciples that they had an important job to do. 
that they were to go and make disciples of all nations. All right. He told them that they should baptize everyone and teach them that Jesus was the Son of God and all the things that Jesus commanded. Jesus promised he would always be with them. He told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait for a gift. So they did. So their waiting is finally over. So on page five, here we go. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the disciples were all together. Suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the house where they were sitting. Then fire appeared to them as small flames resting on each disciple. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to be able to speak and understand other languages. The disciples were so happy. They knew this was the gift Jesus had promised. They knew Jesus sent this gift to help them do the work Jesus had asked them to do. The people in Jerusalem began to gather around. They were amazed at how the disciples were acting. They knew something had happened. And they asked one another, what does this mean? Peter raised his voice and spoke to the people. He told them who Jesus was. He explained in the writings long ago that told about Jesus and about what he would do to save the people from their sins. Peter boldly said that Jesus was the Son of God. He told them that Jesus had been raised from the dead and now sits at the right hand of God in heaven. The people were amazed. They asked Peter and the other disciples, well, what shall we do? Peter told them, repent and be baptized. He told them they too would receive a gift of the Holy Spirit. He said the promise Jesus made was for all of them and for those who were far away. Jesus' promise and gift, Jesus' promise and gifts were for everyone. On that day, about 3,000 people were baptized and the Christian church was started. The Holy Spirit helped it to grow. So, during Pentecost, the church was born. So if you look at page six, we have happy birthday church. So usually when you have a birthday, you probably have a cake or something, right? So God gave his gift to the holy to the church. What gift did he give to his church? Was it a cake? Basketball. No, it was the Holy Spirit. What did the Holy Spirit lead the disciples to do on Pentecost? Well, they decided to speak boldly and talk about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led the crowd to do something. It led them to repent and be baptized. We are baptized with water and God's word. And in our baptism, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Like the crowd, we realize that we need forgiveness. And like the disciples, we are filled with joy and courage and strength to share the message of Jesus with everyone. Now, we often refer to the day of Pentecost as the birthday of the church. And we celebrate this day because God poured out the Holy Spirit on his people. We call all the people who believe in Jesus and all those who do his work, we call them uh, Christians. And they are part of the church. So when we talk about the church, we're not talking about the building itself. We're talking about the people. The people are the church. All right. Um, you've probably heard the song, um, let's see, how's it start? I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. So that's what that's referring to. The church is really the people, it's not the building. The building just happens to be convenient to, for us to get together and meet and talk about God, but the church is really the people, all right? So. Do we get birthday cake on the day of Pentecost? No, no, but you probably get gifts on your birthday. But God did give one special gift on Pentecost. He gave the gift of the Holy Spirit. So looking on page six, it says color the letter candles that have flames. So you're only going to color the candles that have flames. All right. And after you color them, that will tell you the gift that God gave on Pentecost. You'll have to unscramble the letters because the letters are scrambled up, but you'll have to unscramble them. 
And then at the bottom, you should see a familiar Bible passage. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That was one of your um, Bible passages that we worked on for memory work. The other thing you have is you have a worksheet in your packet, and it says, I'm thinking of a number. All right, and I'm going to um, give you clues, and then you're going to draw a line from each cross to the Bible verse that it matches, okay? And then um, you can use stickers on the back to review the Bible words to remember, okay? In your sticker page, there should be some stickers. All right, so <clears throat> here we go. I gotta open my book because it's on two pages. All right, so it says, I'm thinking of a number. How many ways are there to get to heaven? How many ways are there to get to heaven? One. One. One way. There's only one way to get to heaven. So you're gonna write the number one on the second line. Do you see where it says way? Okay. So you write a number one on there, okay? Now, I'm thinking of another number. And it says, how many gods are there? How many gods are there? One. One. So next to God, you're going to put one. Here's another one. I'm thinking of a number. And how many classes are in our classroom? Hmm? How many classes are in our classroom? One. Okay, there's only one. It's only one classroom. So there's only one class in there. So write the number one next to where it says body. Okay, because we are one body. Oh, sprinkles. <laughs> All right, and then we have one more. There's one more. I'm thinking of a number and how many missions does our church have? So in other words, how many main jobs do we have? One. We have one main job. So now we need to draw a line. So each one of those is one. One God, one way, one body, one mission. Okay? So let's match these up to the crosses now. Here we go. Where it says how many gods are there? There is one God. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 has these words. There is one God. So find where it says 1 Corinthians 8, 6 and draw a line from one God to 1 Corinthians 8, 6. On the day of Pentecost, Peter told the crowd, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there is only one God, one Lord, and one Savior of all. All right? So then you have way. So there's only one way. This one should be fairly easy, though. Because if there's only one way, who's the way? Jesus, right? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. So draw a line from one way to that Bible passage. Then we have one body. Okay? Jesus is one body. So we need to draw a line from body to the correct Bible verse. It says, so we, through many, are one body in Christ. We are one body. We are the church. So from where you have the word body, draw it to the cross. It says, so we, through many, are one body. And what is our mission? We have one mission. God gave us the mission of our Bible verse, Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. All right. Finally, let's look at the bottom down there. It says, how many people were baptized on the day of Pentecost? Approximately how many people? Do you remember? If you said 3,000, you are right. But not all who heard God's word believe. Okay? But the growth of the church from maybe a few hundred to a few thousand people from all over is amazing. Only the Holy Spirit could do something like that. 
please pray with me. Lord God, giver of all gifts, I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Use your spirit to help me grow in my faith and to share my faith with others. Amen.